in his light. Unlike most people who get asked to enlighten or inspire, I think I'm first because I'm not what you call an ambitious person. In fact, photography and my marriage are the only things in my life I've never been able to quit. When Mark asked me to present, he suggested I should talk about what inspires me to take photos of St. John's scenes. Well, the second part of the suggestion, the of St. John's scenes, is easy, but maybe not super satisfying for the many boosters here tonight. Uh, the truth is, I photograph St. John because I can't really afford to travel. <laughs> I used to say that I had a love-hate relationship with the city, but I can't even be arsed with that anymore. It's just a place where I happen to be. So then the first part, what inspires me to take photos, is much more of a mystery even to me. And so that's why I titled this thing, Why Photograph? I sometimes say that I had a crush on cameras and only much later fell in love with photographs. My father was interested in photography while I was growing up. And so we always had good cameras around, which, was not often, which I was not often allowed to touch. But for whatever reason, I love cameras as objects, the mechanical bump of the shutter, the engineering, and the science behind them. So I pursued this interest in cameras initially, following and buying up new technology at a furious pace. I bought many cameras and lights and other bits and bobs I hardly ever look at anymore, and some of which I still haven't paid for. <laughs> and that's somewhere about four or five years ago, I realized I had this thing, photography, which I'd obsessed over but didn't really understand. I had some very nice gear. But without the money to buy the very top tier technology or invest in crews and models and all of the trappings of commercial photography, I was at a standstill as far as pursuing newer and more technically difficult images. And I had a lot of photos that weren't very good, about which I cared very little. I started to wonder why my images communicated so little when I invested so much time in technology in making them good. What I discovered is that we, the grand we, I actually understand almost nothing about what makes a good picture versus what makes a bad picture. Good isn't even the right word. What's good except that it communicates some intent? There are rules and guidelines for making meaningful photographs. You might have heard of a rule of thirds, or the quote, if your photos aren't good enough, get closer. <laughs> Robert Kappa's famous advice, F8, be there. Some bullshit, and a bullshit about Fibonacci spirals. But as I study photographs, I realize that the images that are the most moving, in terms of an emotional response, for me, generally follow none of these rules. The photographs that I love the most tend to be full of technical flaws. They're blurry, grainy, the colors are off, light leaked onto the film. There's always something wrong that makes them seem more down to earth. And so I became a photographer who believes in making images that are down to earth, real, warts and all. And I became a photographer who believes in sharing photographs because like music or art, or perhaps most accurately, poetry, photographs are just another form of communication between us humans. It's amazing to me how we spend some amount of time every single day of our lives, or of our, sorry, every single day of our formal education, from kindergarten to the end of university with the written word. Most of us learn how to write, how to read, how to interpret, how to be critical of literature. In grade 11, we practice making haikus and counting syllables in Shakespeare's sonnets, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but most of us will have graduated to our professional lives, having never spent a single hour understanding how photographs are made, how they speak to us, how we read and absorb them, or how to be critical of them. And yet, far more people are making and sharing photographs today than are writing poems or essays or novels. For me, understanding photographs is hard. I'm trying to figure out what technical flaws add to the photograph add to what a photograph communicates. It's just a little personal puzzle that needs sorting. Why is one photo good and another one bad? And because it's hard to understand and quantify what goes into good photography, it's hard for me to make a good photograph. Sometimes I make them by accident, but to make them intentionally and consistently, it requires a lot of experimentation and practice, I think. So I practice. And that's it. It's just a little challenge that seems deceptively simple. A puzzle, a game. And like any game, like a great marriage. It's just kind of hard for me to quit. So I'm not sure how igniting this little bit was, or if I've inspired at all. But if I could challenge you, the next time you really notice a picture, if you could question why it's good or bad, 
or what difference it makes, or why it was made, well, I guess that's good enough. I'm not an ambitious person, remember? 